Alright, episode two. I hope everyone enjoyed the last one. Let's watch. Yeah, a bunch of little kids in a pew, in a tub. Do you have anything to say about the creepy-ass picture? Like why this kid has no face? The one in the middle? And the other two look like they might be dead? Okay. Perhaps in her dresser, or... I could tell plenty of stories about this table. To be honest, I'm surprised it's still in one piece. This one wobbles. I always meant to do something about that, but somehow never got around to it. So, wait. Your wife was in the chair that wobbled? You're such a dick. This used to be her favorite spot. She used to sit here, put her legs on the table, lean back, and just give me one of her smiles. Those effervescent, incandescent smiles. Once, we dragged these chairs out to the lake and scrubbed off all the dust and grime of years. That was a long time ago. So... Huh. For all the charm of furniture like this, something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman. Sort of brooding. Is that a famous person? I don't know famous people. One of a matching pair, obviously. There was a piece of gum stuck to the underside of this chair back when we bought this place. We just left it there. For all the charm of furniture like this, something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman. Sort of brooding. I kind of want to make that my thumbnail. True friends stand by each other through any adversary. Adversary? Adversity. I can't speak. Bleh. I don't want to go outside yet. I want to check out the entire inside. She made this with her own hands. Cabin. She was really good. Oh, she wove a carpet? Cool. Look what I made, hun. In case we ever need to sweep something under the carpet. Like a body? Wait, is there a hat See there? the pattern of yellow squares? It's from this rug I remembered from my nursery. I must have been like three or four, but it always stuck with me. Is there a hatch under there? Or like a door or something? No trap door under there. Just more creaky floor. I won't believe you until you tell me. I always resisted the temptation to sweep things under there when it was my turn to tidy up. The rug's all crooked again. Can you help me straighten it out? No trap door under there. Just more creaky floor. I always resisted the temptation to sweep things under there when it was my turn to tidy up. Come love with peace in your heart. I can't pronounce that name, so I won't even try. Okay. That sounds familiar. It, I don't know. Well. Something draws me to this trunk. She did. Is it the memories locked within? Or something else. Is she inside? We use this trunk to store trinkets and papers, but I can't help thinking there's something of importance inside. I need a key, don't I? It's too painful. I want to, but not yet. Why is it painful? Ooh, is she really dead in there? We found this trunk yeah. at a flea market. We used to love rummaging around those in our early years. Well, since I've been through flea Big enough for a lifetime of mementos. Or a body. We hated guns, so we never had any, even out here. But this would have been a good place to keep one, since it can be locked. Foreshadowing? We found this trunk at a flea market. 
We used to love rummaging around those in our big enough for a lifetime of mementos. Oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go. Uh, mm, there we go. The dining table was well worn even when we acquired the cabin. Well, I mean, you could tell from thing. its appearance that it had been the centerpiece of many happy occasions. Okay, so that's not changing. And there were many more to come. I thought maybe it would change the more stuff you look at. Like, the more you remember, or whatever. I wasn't sure. Do I want to check out this side, or... Oh. Our refuge from the world. A place of warmth and passion. And you want stuff bland. Sometimes we joked we needed to be so far out in the woods because that's how our sex life was. Far out. Is that where the clock was? Why isn't it ticking now? I just noticed that. It stopped. The furniture came with the cabin, but the bed clothes we brought with us. A place like this needs some luxury, but without her, there are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. I feel too restless to sleep right now. I don't sleep well without Serena next to me. Both a blessing and a curse, I suppose. There are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. Okay. Uh, all right. You're looking at porn. So is that it, or or wait, is this your wife's bedside table or yours? It's on the same side as the vanity. There's a strand of blonde hair in the comb. Yes, blonde hair like. Sun rays. I'm remembering. What's wrong with my memory? Did I have a stroke? That's totally not creepy. She also had a brush, but I can't see it anywhere. Nor some of her other personal items. So I'm thinking this guy was left by his wife. Either that, or he killed her. It's just a regular comb bought from a supermarket. New enough to still have all its teeth. Maybe both. Hers. I used it too, when shaving. There's only an outhouse, and for some reason, whoever erected the rickety thing didn't think to include wall-to-wall -wall mirrors. So, <laughs> this came in handy. <laughs> Should I dust for fingerprints? I might if I were in a detective story. After all these years, it permanently smells of her and her perfume. The last thing I need now is to see myself in the mirror. I must look awful. I want to see how this guy looks. I started to choke there. <laughs> There's dust on this, too. It's everywhere. After all these years, it permanently smells of her and her perfume. Dearest, how do I say any of this? I like your way with words, but if I don't write this, I don't know what I'll do. My life feels so unreal now, dreamlike, but wonderfully so. Let me try, even if clumsily. The hours I spent with you when we last met are precious to me. I was so lost such a short time ago. Everything seemed drained of color and feeling. I think we were meant to find each other, to bring meaning to our lives again, make sense of the confusion shrouding both of us. When we stepped into the crystal silence of the snowy woods, away from the chatter of the guests, all nature seemed expectant, as if holding its breath, witnessing a rare moment of something infinitely better than what life in the ordinary run of things has to offer. Do you remember how the light crust of the snow glittered in the reflected light of the country house? How the copse of trees in which we walked was haloed with a magical aura? I felt the chill of the night air, and you opened your coat and enfolded me in your arms, and we hugged tight, sharing the warmth. 
sharing the only thing any of us have to share on this earth when you think about it. Well, that seems like a pretty good way with words. <laughs> All right, um... And then you toppled us on the snow, you devil. We laughed and rolled around, my head already spinning from the wine and crisp pure night air and the stillness all around. We lay back and I guess when I realized what I was seeing, the luminous starscape like a vast velvet cloth sprinkled with powdered sugar like it can only be seen in the countryside. I had tears in my eyes when I turned to you and we kissed, and it felt like the only moment in all of time, or outside time, and ours was the only spark that could ignite the universe. You gave me these moments. You complete me in ways I never knew to dream of. Let me be the one who makes sense of the confusion whenever you feel lost again. We can make our own world against the rest of the world if need be. Together we can silence all the demons, heal all the wounds. I love you. In eternity yours, Serena. Okay. Okay. Well, still, it's better with words than I am. It's been so long since I said her name out loud. I think that's the moment I fell in love with her, when she told me the soothing sound of her name. Okay, what Alright, so that was episode two. I hope everyone enjoyed. I'm going to get right on the next one. See you guys next time.